Beasley presents Big 8 Conference Basketball. Kansas State is looking for their first win in the Big 8 this year. Oh, what a place to start. The Iowa State Cyclones have not lost a game at home this season. Will Kansas State break the spell of Hilton magic? It's Kansas State and Iowa State, and it's coming up next. Big 8 Conference Basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of high quality, super clean gasolines. Phillips 66, the performance company. And brought to you in part by Bud Light. By Ford Motor Company. By Dr. Pepper. And by Gillette Sensor. Welcome to Ames, Iowa. About three inches of snow greeted us last night, but it's sunny and warm inside Hilton Coliseum, and Hilton Magic has certainly made its presence felt this year for Iowa State. The Cyclones have been nine of their opponents disappear, and today Iowa State takes on Kansas State. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong with Dave Logan, and Dave, uh, certainly Iowa State has been a team on a roll, but Kansas State, a team with an identity crisis right now. Well, they're looking for an identity. They're also looking for somebody to hit a jump shot. This team in 14 games is shooting 40 percent from the field even though an athletic team and a team that rebounds well that's a tough number to overcome and so while Kansas State is flunking chemistry all A's for Iowa State Iowa State's off to a great start 14 and 3 and Johnny Orr I think may be the most surprised it's a team that runs the court well they shoot the ball well and Julius Mikulik is a big guy 6'11 that not only can shoot the ball well he's an excellent passer from the perimeter the Cyclones a very good basketball team one thing to remember about Kansas State they love coming here to Hilton they have a very good record in Ames. We'll come back. It's Iowa State and Kansas State. The starting lineups are next. Here's today's keys of the game brought to you by Ford. And Dave, Kansas State's got to shoot 50% or around there. They've done that only three times this year. Askia Jones has got to have a big game. He's got to be the go-to guy. Iowa State must rebound. The Wildcats are a pretty good rebounding team, so therefore the Cyclones must control the boards and stop the Kansas State transition game, get back on defense. Yesterday in practice, we were watching Johnny Orr, and he was very afraid of how fast Dana Alton and the Wildcats like to go. And I think they'll go faster today because they are still, as we talked about, in search of good shots. When you're not really scoring and you're not shooting the ball well, you try to get as many easy baskets as you can. All-time winningest coach in Iowa State history and the all-time winningest coach at the University of Michigan as well. Johnny Orr now in his 12th year here with Iowa State. Man, it seems like just yesterday he stepped on the campus of Iowa State and he along with Billy Tubbs came into the Big 8 at the same time and really changed the complexion of this conference. You see the series record between these two teams and Kansas State has really done very well here at Hilton Coliseum. Now the shot clock right now on the uh, one end of the uh, arena has either been unplugged or turned off and they've plugged it back in and we're set to go. For Iowa State, a team that has really meshed well for Johnny Orr. The shot clock is working now. But for Kansas State, Dave, uh, a team that right now is searching and the schedule makers have not been kind to the Wildcats starting at Oklahoma State and then versus Oklahoma now coming here. It's been a tough start for him, no question about that. Eaton will jump center with Wiley Howard. It goes out of bounds and it will go to Iowa State to start things off. The Cyclones this year have enjoyed not only a 14 and 3 record which is their second best start in the school's history but they've also enjoyed a one and one start in the big eight conference including a win over ou that's mikalik now to eaton big ben he's being guarded by nickerson that'll be a great matchup today and although kansas state has struggled offensively they have not been that bad defensively Justice Thigpen starts things off for Iowa State. And that's a play they ran a lot yesterday in practice. The scissor play, Thigpen coming from the high post, breaking past the pick of Mikulik, and he can shoot that jumper from 12 to 15 feet. And Marcus Ziegler working with Ron Bayless. 
Trying to work the ball inside to Wiley Howard. Howard, the only player on Kansas State's team shooting over 50%. And Kansas State today has got to get some scoring from their inside people. Wiley Howard has, needs a big game. Punched away by Collier, but Eaton picks it up in the backcourt. And again, Mikulik at the high post will set picks. Hoiberg, now to Eaton. Howard Eaton. He usually gets off to a fast start and then concentrates on defense from there for Iowa State. And the Clones lead by two. Iowa State defensively very aggressive. Kansas State will look to try to be more patient on offense when they're forced into the half-court game. Howard again, now looking at a nice backdoor cut by Nickerson. He can't get it to go. Rebounded by Collier, but stolen away by Hoiber. Good job holding it up. Eaton streaking in. Good defense by Kansas State that time. Collier got a hand on the ball as Eaton was taking it up for the jump shot. And Eskia Jones with Hoiberg right in his face. Jones has struggled lately. In his last uh, couple of games, he's only had a co combination of nine points. And a foul on Eaton. That'll be Howard's first. We did the game last week at Iowa State, or with Oklahoma State and Iowa State, and Eaton got in early foul trouble trying to guard the big guy. Good pass from Eskia Jones. And you can see a good move inside as Collier, anticipating the contact, jumps toward the basket. Eaton kind of backed off, and Collier was under the rim when he let that thing go. Kansas State, as we told you, really struggling from the field. And when teams realize that, they try to force the ball inside a little bit more. I, th I think this team will be at their best when Dane Alton can get them in the open court and get them some easy transition buckets. Where they get the steals on the, on the press and that kind of thing. That helps a field goal percentage. And that helps the free throw percentage. Two for two for Collier, and we're tied at four. Beacon League, an excellent passer from the top of the key. Bayless pulls up to the jumper over the smaller Ziegler. Rebounded by Mikuli. His shot was short, and it comes out to Nickerson. Nickerson had transferred from Wichita State. Spent a year at Butler County Community College. Tough assignment for Hoiberg on Eskia Jones. Two of the good young players in this conference. And a foul. That's going to go on Jones as he tried to set a pick on Bayless. It's his first and the first team foul on Kansas State. With 17-11 to go, just the start of things here in Ames. Big pen pulls up. And a good rebound by Howard. Ziegler, while he was out for five games, the Cats went two and three, so you see his importance to this club, even though he doesn't score much. Oh. Wiley Howard, tough shot, and Howard's got four. Well, good defense by Mikulik. Howard just fades from about 12 feet, nothing but net. Eaton with a pump fake, and a good steal by Jones. That's good help defense. Jones realizes that Eaton's going to be hung up, stays right with his man. Nickerson pulls up. It's too long. And Mikuli tips it to himself. Now here comes Thigpen. Thigpen with four. Most right-handed shooters are at their best when they dribble with their left hand before they take it up. Why? And just as Thigpen, well, you get in the rhythm, it's easier to bring the basketball up. And Thigpen is at his most dangerous when he's dribbling with that left hand. But does that also work true for a left-handed shooter? Very much so. Dribbling a right hand. You bet. It's easier for a right-handed shooter to be dribbling left-handed and bring that ball up. You stay in rhythm. Stolen away, almost. But getting it back is Jones. Oh, nice. nice pass to Howard. He misses the chip shot. Well, you talk about bad shooting for Kansas State. Big Penn now is a half dozen. Well, I'll tell you, that one series more or less mirrors the frustrations of Kansas State this year. Unable to get a chip shot. Wally Howard with nothing in front of him leaves it short. Four straight and the crowd's in it at Hilton. 
Four straight by the clones. Up and in and all around the basket, but Collier answers and we're tied at eight. I think Ziegler's gonna have to come out. He is really tired. Bayless has made him work exceptionally hard on offense and right now Marcus Ziegler is out of gas. You see Kansas, was Kansas State now going to a zone, two, three zone. And Bayless for a three, no, but Eaton with the long oh, rebound. Got away with the push too. That one bounced all around and in and Howard Eaton has four. Well, Howard Eaton had both hands in the middle of the back. And with 14.44 to go in the first half, we're going to have a timeout. Dane Altman and his Wildcats have missed a few early, but they're hanging right in there with Iowa State as the Cyclones lead the Wildcats by two here in the early going at Hilton Coliseum in Ames. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa State leading by two, 10-8 our score, and look at this. Sometimes you get away with things. Left corner, watch Howard Eaton just push Wiley Howard in the middle of the back. No call, and then Eaton gets the basketball back and gets a friendly roll here in the Hilton Coliseum rims, and Sacklow's get two. You can't always see That's things. That's Hilton magic. Yeah, especially <laughs> when it's down low. That's right. And you need a little magic. Pressure by Iowa State. Nickerson gets it back to Ziegler, who had a chance to get some gas again. You see the field goal percentage now. Iowa State starting off strong. Kansas State for them, that's excellent. They're a team that averages about 44% from the field. Howard backing in. Good head fakes. Wiley Howard. Boy, he's off to a quick start for Kansas State. He's got a half dozen. That time a nice move. He shows Howard Eaton the basketball, then the head and shoulders fake. Gets him in the air and knocks home the eight-footer. Rockets now back in their zone. It's a two-three zone, actually a two-one-two zone. The shots will come from the not the baseline, but the corner. That shot from Eaton is good. Howard Eaton with six. Eaton can score, known morally, mostly for his defense, but Eaton scored 20 against Iowa and 21 against Creighton. Ziegler for three! Marcus Ziegler, who is hitting almost 50% of his three-pointers this year, cans one, and Kansas State has the lead by one. Kansas State happy to see him get off to a good start. He was four of his last, last 15 from the field. Mikalik tries to answer. Bayless came in strong. It goes out of bounds, and it'll go to Kansas State. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated and intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of the program without the express prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is forbidden. Wally Howard will get a rest for Kansas State. Rediger will check in. Also checking in, count the basket, Tricell Roan, a junior college transfer. He gets the two and he's fouled by Hoiberg. Tricell Roan has been in double figures his last three games and he, much the same as Galen Nickerson, an explosive player. You can see Roan takes it right to the bucket. The contact on Hoiberg as Roan leans in. And those are the kind of baskets we were talking about. The easy transition baskets. You break the press, you take it when you've got the numbers strong to the hole. See, Dana Altman likes that. Roan off the bench has had three straight games in double figures. And he's starting off hot here. And a four-point lead for Kansas State. That's their biggest. Kansas State in this zone will try to force Iowa State to shoot from the perimeter. The key will be how they block out. Pretty tough to get bodies on bodies in a 2-3 zone. People can sneak to the glass. Bayless dribbles through. And there's a rebound that you talked about. Rediger blocks it out of bounds. Well, stay tuned to halftime. Logan and I are going to give you this week's Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest question. So have your paper, paper and pencil ready. I will. You going to give them the answer, too? Yeah. And a double dribble on the part of Thigpen. So another turnover for Iowa State. And so far, the Cyclones have started slowly in Kansas State off to a good start. The Wildcats leading by four, and they have the basketball. And Dana Altman has not sat down the entire game. It's important for his club because they're struggling to get off to that good start. They certainly have in the first six minutes. Boy, it's a big game for them. 0-2 in the conference. You don't want to start 0-3. Nice pass down low and wide open.
It was Collier, and he missed the chip shot. And then over the back on the foul, that goes against Vincent Jackson, his first. He waited. If you just catch the ball and take it up strong, Collier has the basket. But he waits. He head fakes. He waits for the defense to come to him. And then he's a little bit off balance. He might have been surprised there was no one there. And checking in for K-State is Daryl Cunningham, a sophomore. Sat out last year. Hoiberg and Justice Thigpen, two good perimeter shooters. And Thigpen can't hit the three. And here comes Ziegler. Now he'll slow things up. Roan, what an acrobatic move that was. A little bit short, though, and Hoiberg has the rebound. That's just not a good shot. Roan, previous time down, a three-point play. That time an off-balance, give it by a shot. Bayless might have gotten away with a walk. Skip pass. Hoiberg for three. And there's another rebound and put back by Eaton. Boy, he's having a big game. Eaton with eight. And again, tough to block off in that 2-3 zone. Eaton on the baseline gets inside Rediger for the easy putback. Eaton, the leading rebounder for Iowa State, was about six a game. Look down low, Jackson Rediger was right there for the rebound, and then finally the put back by Cunningham. That's a good rebounding team, partially because they miss so many shots and they go to the glass. Indication of that. Now they've out rebounded their opponents, Dave, in the last four games by nine a game. Bayless trying to get him out of that zone, but so far Iowa State is cold from the outside, and Mikali picks up a foul. That's his first and the team's third. Third team foul on Iowa State with 11.04 to go in the first half. And we're going to take a timeout. Kansas State surprising Iowa State here at Hilton. The Wildcats leading by four. Here we are at Iowa State, and Kansas State has used a zone to take a four-point lead. And we want you to break away to your nearest Phillips 66 station and to the Super Clean Sweepstakes, a chance to win a trip for two to Acapulco or the 92 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. You can also win a trip to the Phillips 66 Big 8 Tournament. Tickets to Big 8 home games in your area. So enter now at participating Phillips 66 stations. Wide open down low as Howard, his shot is short. The reason is a foul on Eaton, and Howard Eaton, who has eight points for Iowa State, picks up his second foul. And even though Kansas State has not had much success at hitting the inside shots, they've been able to get the basketball to the paint against the Iowa State defense. Eaton, right there, complaining that he went straight up. You take a look. Again, Howard, watch the position he gets the basketball. That's too deep. Now that's in the paint, and you're going to have a lot of problems defensively. You can see the contact, although slight, as Wiley Howard left the ball short. As a team, Kansas State hitting about 67% from the line. Howard hitting 73%. Howard, uh, you see, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, same high school as Mitch Richmond and Michael Irvin, the wide receiver for the Cowboys. Some high school. <laughs> Pretty good athletic talent, isn't it? I should say. And checking back in is Askia Jones, who's averaging 16, but is scoreless so far here today. Well, so far, Kansas State hasn't needed his points. Wildcats now with a six-point lead. Justice Thigpen is going to have to penetrate and get easier shots. You can see Iowa State passing the basketball on the perimeter. Going to take the ball in the hole and then kick it out. You'll find somebody wide open. Big Ben does drive into traffic, and the rebound comes to Brian Henson, Steve's younger brother. Wears the same number, has the same haircut. Askia Jones hits the three. He leads the Big Eight in that department. If you let him set his feet and get a good look at the basket, chances are you run to the other end. And a nine-point lead for the Wildcats. This zone has caused Iowa State fits. Skip McCoy might be a zone breaker with a three. Nice job of rotating the basketball that time, even without penetration. But Brian really looks and plays a lot like his brother, doesn't he? He really does. This is our first look at the freshman this year. Ski Jones, another three, no. 
Mikulik doing a good job on the boards and now leading the break. The pass to Hoiberg. Oh, a nice, strong move by the freshman. Hoiberg takes it in with the one hand. Power move. Four straight by the Cyclones. And a steal by Eaton. Big pen to Eaton. And a foul down low as McCoy was trying to get in. And we've got a foul. I think it's going on Cunningham. No, instead it goes on Vincent Jackson, his second. And the Cyclones, we talked about them this year, unbeaten here at home. They really play to the crowd. And this place has exploded the last couple of minutes. The defensive pressure starting to take its toll on Kansas State. Not doing a good job handling the basketball. I know you agree with me that it's fun just going around the big eights. Uh, everywhere you go, the crowds are just terrific. Well, they're 68 and 7, the big eight conference. Home records this year. So not many teams come into this conference and win on the road. McCoy with a pair of trays. And after Kansas State led by nine, Iowa State has pulled it within one. Hoiberg with a steal. Mikulik. McCoy. And now they'll reset the offense. Smart move by McCoy. He could have taken that three-pointer, but it would have been hurried. Instead, he brings it back out, and they'll set. McCoy faked a three. Good defense that time by Jones. Now McCoy is open for three. Wow. And all three threes, McCoy has been wide open because of the rotation of the basketball. Kansas State not doing a good job getting back to the weak side. And a two-point lead for Iowa State, and a foul on McCoy. Tried to strip it away from the freshman Henson, and McCoy called for his first, the fifth team foul, on Johnny Orr and the Cyclones. Kansas State led by nine, and 11 straight by Iowa State have found the Cyclones leading by two. What's Kansas State going to do here, Dave, to try to turn this momentum back their way? First thing they've got to do is just take care of the basketball and not really get caught up in the surge. And they'll second look to get the ball inside, probably to Wiley Howard if they can. Well, those threes by McCoy have been huge for Iowa State. Good defense. Hoiberg almost had a steal a couple of times. Well, Iowa State really has elevated the defensive pressure. You see the three-pointers so far. Cyclones three of five, Kansas State two of their three. All three of those from McCoy. Out of bounds, it'll go to Iowa State. We're talking but about great defense. Mikulik right in the face of the shooter. 7.41 to go in the first half. Altman still clapping, but Iowa State's crowd is really the one going nuts. And we're back after this from your local Phillips 66 dealer. Knocking down three-point shots is my specialty on the basketball court. But I know it's just as important to score academically. Set your sights on a good education. Phillips 66 joins Big 8 Conference Universities in recognizing academic excellence among Big 8 student-athletes. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong back at Hilton Coliseum, and the Cyclones have gone crazy with 11 straight. Well, more times than not at home, you play much better defense. You can see Mikulik getting to the shot of Aaron Collier right in the face and Iowa State has made this surge with great defense and excellent perimeter shooting and you can see Kansas State back to the man-to-man -man. Skip McCoy was knocking that zone out Hoiberg has his shot go in or not and a good rebound by Howard now Kansas State let's see how they come out after that timeout timeout came at a good time for the Wildcats because the Cyclones were really on a roll Jones for three. Oh, that was down halfway for Kansas State and back out. Well, they got exactly what they wanted to. Good rotation of the basketball. Ski Jones all by himself. Now, Raycom's pleased to welcome those viewers joining us on the Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. <laughs> so 
Big Pen working off the pick. Big Pen's now got eight. And that was with the right hand off the dribble. You can see easily the difference in the two teams. Iowa State will take it up from the outside with a lot of confidence. Kansas State, because of their shooting woes, they want to work that ball into the paint. Up and in for Galen Nickerson. Is that uh, shooting woes? Is that a catchy thing? I mean, if one guy starts missing, does it catch well, on to the other guys? I think it works in the mindset of the players. They read, they know exactly their shooting percentage, and, and I'm sure the coaches in practice tell them, hey, we've got to get good looks at the basket. You can't just be casting up from anywhere. Henry Altman saying to himself, man, I got this team in a two-year shooting slump. Last year, that was the Wildcats' problem. Lauren Meyer. Boy, what a nice touch for the big man. He's a 6'11 player out of Ruthven, Iowa. And he's going to be an all-Big 8 center in the next couple of years. You think so? Oh, he's got tremendous potential. Few guys that size have the athletic ability that Lauren Meyer does. Big pin went for the steal, now to Ziegler. Outside, Wiley Howard. Skip McCoy with the long rebound. Off his foot, and it'll go to Kansas State. That's a good call. Not a popular one here in Ames, but a good call as it went off McCoy's foot. A good hustle by Ski Jones to get on the court after the basketball. And Bayless will check back in. He takes the place of Thigpen. Well, you don't know how tough it is for a coach mm. to get his players to go out and play hard all the time when they just have trouble shooting the ball. You can play good defense. You can rebound well. You can do everything the right way. And if you're not knocking down easy shots, really tough to win, especially in this conference. Like being a golfer and missing three-foot putts. That's you right. get so close and you can't make it. And Mikalik will be whistled for his second foul. Collier's a force inside. He's strong enough that once he gets Meeklik on his back, he can hold him there, holds the position, and is strong to the basket. You see Meeklik reaches across with that left arm. Well, Meeklik's now got two, and Howard Eaton has two. And going to the line will be Collier. He's two of two from the line so far today. Now two of three. And the Big 8 would like to recognize Kansas State track coach John Capriotti. He'll serve as an assistant to the USA men's track and field team at the World Cup Championships in Havana, Cuba uh, this coming September. Pippett checks in for Iowa State. Brad Pippett, a senior, one of only two seniors on this Iowa State team. The long rebound. Walk comes down in the hands of Roan, and he walked with it. Roan tried to gather himself before he went up into the Giants and moved both feet. Kansas State led, uh, let's see, 23 to 12 or 23 14. And now it's been uh, Iowa State who has done the job. And a foul down low away from the action. I think it's Meyer. Yeah, Lauren Meyer picks up his first. And that's, that's the seventh team foul now on Iowa State. We watched him yesterday in practice. He was doing some jams that would make NBA players proud some wheelie birds and <laughs> over his head and for a guy that big to get up that high I tell you it's unusual oh. missed free throw the front end of the one and one that's almost like a turnover for Kansas State Mikalik with a blaze of speed it's blocked but a foul on Howard he picks up his first and Mikalik will go to the line I tell you, Mikulik reminds me so much of a player back in the early 70s from BYU, Kresmir Chosik, who at 6'11", had many of the skills that Julius Mikulik has. You see, putting the basketball on the floor and taking it strong to the basket, and yet he has the quickness that men of his size just simply don't, they don't possess. Iowa State found out about Mikulik from an assistant coach at Morningside. Rick Wesley, who has grandparents who live in Czechoslovakia, decided to check up on it. He said, if we'd have found out that he was uh, from somewhere like Bulgaria or something, we probably would have forgotten all about it. But since I have relatives in Czechoslovakia, Wesley said, let's check up on this guy. And that nasty thing you see over his left eye, courtesy of Byron Houston, Oklahoma State, was stitched up last week in Stillwater after he took an elbow. And a double miss by Mikulik at the line, an 80% free throw shooter. Kansas State. Trailing by four with a basketball. Stolen away by Bayless. Give it up, no nice. The Pippet. He's fouled, and Pippet will have to earn it at the line. 
But what a great look by Bayless. Anticipates the pass, gets into the lane, instead of taking it to the basket, realizes the pivot is running down the middle of the court. Watch this bounce pass. Bayless can take it home. Great pass. There's the foul on Nickerson. Bayless, the bounce pass, if that's not bounce passed, it doesn't get through, and Pivot hanging in the air almost gets the basket. This place can get quiet, can it? All around and in for Pippet. Loud and quiet. Listen to the silence. Listen to the silence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. Well, well, I did. You got me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like ignoring the noise, right? <laughs> <laughs> good entry. And a good play. Wiley Howard, he's exploding for Kansas State. A guy averaging around 11. He's already got 10 in this game. Cyclone's trying to pound it inside. shot is short. Four purple shirts all around it. That's the frustration of a team that has a, an 0-2 record in the Big 8 Conference, but Altman, ever the cheerleader, trying to keep his Wildcats in it, and they are very much in this game, trailing by just four. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Right now, Iowa State, after trailing by nine, leads Kansas State by four. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong. And maybe one of the reasons, Dave, they're doing it is you talked about how Iowa State had to control the glass. So far, they have been. So far, so good. Iowa State leading 16 to 12 in rebounds. And again, Kansas State, an excellent rebounding team, even though they don't possess a great deal of size. Very athletic inside. They go to the glass, and the Cyclones have done a nice job there. And uh, Kansas State back to the zone again. Think about Johnny Orr, I'd get Skip McCoy up off the bench. <laughs> yeah, he's got those three three pointers. Shot clock is at 25, still plenty of time there. Pippett will try a three. It's no good, and the rebound to Wiley Howard, who quickly got it to Roan. Now Ziegler will set the offense for K-State. Roan checks up inside three-point range, in and out, no good. Bayless lost the handle on it, but it was tipped out by Collier, and it'll go to Iowa State. And I think you can count the shots that Kansas State has hit from outside the key on one hand this afternoon. And until they hit that consistently, the Iowa State defense is going to slough off and play those inside shots. <laughs> Kick it back out, you get a shot. Good movement by Iowa State, and Thigpen converts. That's a two-pointer for Justice Thigpen. Nice look by Howard Eaton. Right back out to Bayless, who finds Thigpen all by himself. Good ball movement. Roan with a quick jump step into the lane. Trissell Roan. <laughs> that was like a kangaroo hop. A long way, too. Not only up, but he took about five yards on that hop. <laughs> Over the top goes Howard. Good hustle by the senior to knock it out of bounds, but it'll stay with Iowa State. And Mikalik will check back in along with Hoiberg. And coming back for Kansas State, Ski Jones. Ski only has three points in this contest. Pippett will go out along with Lauren Meyer for the last 2.15. Right now, Iowa State's kind of rolling the dice a little bit with Mikalik and Eaton with two fouls each. And they're both in there. Hoiberg. Tipped up and in by Mikalik. His first two of the game. Good control in the air, Mikalik with the left hand. Jones trying to get loose on Hoiberg. And Nickerson, outstanding player from Wichita State. 
for a three for Askia Jones. He's now got six in the game. Nice pass from Nickerson. Askia Jones, when he sets up, he sets the feet and catches the basketball, he is ready to shoot it. Mikalik is ready to shoot as well and hit it. From the corner, Mikalik showing his range. You know, if you didn't know Iowa State and you said they've got a 6'11 guy that shoots three-pointers rather well, you'd say, sure they do. Yeah, right. But Mikalik is an excellent shooter. That shot well short. Here comes Mikalik. It was partially tipped. Now to Bayless. Inside to Mikalik, and he's fouled by Rettiger. The call is before the shot, so Mikalik... That's the uh, sixth team foul on Kansas State. Won't go to the line. And again, look who dishes the basketball. Bayless, strong to the hold, now gives it up as Mikulik down the middle. They're going to say Rediger got him before the shot. I think Bayless. it's right here. Watch where he gets him. Bayless off the bounce pass. Right there he gets him. And then he regains the ball and he got him again. The ball goes out of bounds. That's, as I mentioned, only the sixth team foul on Kansas State this half. And nearing the one-minute mark of the first half. See, right now, Iowa State has four people in the game that can shoot three-pointers. Thigpen, Bayless, Hoiberg, and Mikalik. Tough, tough to defense. Mikalik from the corner again. That one a little strong. You see the time remaining in the first half. A little double team on Ziegler. He breaks out of it. Door cut for Jackson off the glass and good. Vincent Jackson with his first two. Nice patient move, a good backdoor cut by Jackson. High up off the glass. Looks like Iowa State's going to go for the last shot of the first half. Shot clock is turned off. And the crowd wants Dana Altman to stay in the co coach's box. That's what they're up in arms about. He's a little bit out onto the court. Swing it around for Bayless for three. Rediger with a rebound, not much time left. In fact, Jones doesn't get the shot off, and that'll do it. First half comes to a close. Johnny Orr hitches up the pants. He knows he's got some work to do. Iowa State, after trailing by nine, leads by five at the half. Big Eight Conference Basketball is brought to you by Bush Beer. By Ford Motor Company. By Counter Lock and Load Closed Handling System. By Norwegian Cruise Line. And by True Value Hardware. Welcome back to Hilton Coliseum. Right now, Iowa State leading Kansas State by four at the half, 38-34. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong. Well, how did Iowa State do it? They were trailing by nine at one point. Well, they got back in it, I think, with a combination of a couple of things. Very good defense, and they hit three three-pointers. Skip McCoy, good rotation of the basketball. He's wide open, and Iowa State has shot the ball very well. But Kansas State, I think, should be very pleased at halftime because they've been able to stay in it. They stem the tide of that one surge the Cyclones had. And Dana Altman's trying to figure out what he can do in the second half to win his first Big A game. One thing Kansas State has to do in that second half is hit more of those shots, and they'll try to do that. Jones kept him in with a couple of three-pointers, and right now Iowa State leads by four at the half. And now it's time for this week's Big Eight Conference Player of the Week. Brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline. This week's Phillips 66 Big 8 Conference Player of the Week is Missouri senior Anthony Peeler. Peeler poured in 64 points in the Tigers' first two league games. Peeler also set a school record by sinking 28 consecutive free throws. Congratulations to Missouri's Anthony Peeler. This week's Phillips 66 Big 8 Conference Player of the Week. This week's Phillips 66 classroom champion is Iowa State Reserve Basketball Center, Greg Hester. Greg is a junior majoring in mechanical engineering. Hester from Davenport, Iowa, has been the recipient of the Athletic Council Academic Award the past two years. Phillips 66, proud to salute those athletes who excel in the classroom as well as athletics. 
each week we honor a women's player of the week from around the Big 8 Conference. This week it's Kansas State's Mary Jo Miller. Miller scored a career-high 35 in the Lady Cats' victory over Oklahoma. Miller's now played in over 100 games for K-State. Congratulations to Mary Jo Miller, this week's Big 8 Conference Women's Player of the Week. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. This is the Raycom Network. And now it's time for this week's Norwegian Cruise Line Big 8 Trivia Contest. Our question this week, name the former Oklahoma State All-American who was the MVP of the NCAA Tournament in 1945 and 46. Write your answer, plus your name, address, and phone number, and then send it to this address. A winner will be drawn at random from all correct answers received by January 31st, and will be awarded an exciting cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line. Reminder, you must be 18 or older to be eligible to win the cruise. For those of you who entered last week, our question, this former Kansas State coach was the 50 National Collegiate Coach of the Year and is currently an assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls. Name him. Well, the answer, of course, Tex Winter. And our lucky winner this week, Bert Kretcher of Lake Quivira, Kansas, who's won a cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line. Welcome back to Iowa State. Right now, the Cyclones are leading Kansas State at the end of the first half. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Kansas State led by nine early with Askia Jones hitting from outside. Well, they shot the ball well, 50% in the first half. And keep in mind, for the year, this team has shot 50% or better in only three games. Askia Jones sets his feet. He's an excellent three-point shooter. He leads the Big 8 Conference in that statistic. Ski had six in the first half. These first half highlights brought to you by Counter Insecticide. So Iowa State answered with their own three-point shooter, Skip McCoy, who had three threes in the first half. Now let's take a look at today's Gillette right guard halftime statistics. As you see, Kansas State shooting very well from the field, but not getting as many shots as Iowa State. And that's really not unusual because Kansas State, again, in a half-court offense, they're going to be much more patient than Iowa State. Nine more opportunities, 19 rebounds for the Cyclones. They more than held their own on the boards. Well, they certainly did, and that's something that most of Kansas State's opponents this year have not done. But all translates into a four-point lead for Iowa State at the half. Raycom will be televising the Naismith Award ceremony this April over many of these station stations. The award is given annually to the nation's top college basketball player. Here's a look at some of this year's candidates. And now a look at a previous Naismith Smith winner. Domino's Pizza presents Naismith Award winners. No college player came close to outgunning Pistol Pete Maravich. Playing for his dad's LSU Tigers, the Louisiana sharpshooter averaged 44.2 points a game, highest in NCAA history. But stats could never capture the wonder of Pistol Pete's moves, many of which had never been seen before. The late, great Pete Maravich, the 1970 Naismith Award winner. Conference Basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of top quality, super clean gasolines, celebrating 75 years of pride. And in part by Bush Beer. By Buick. By Dr. Pepper. And by True Value Hardware. Welcome back to Hilton Coliseum and Ames. Right now, Iowa State leading by four at the half. Let's take a look at uh, scores around the country on the Budweiser scoreboard. And on that Budweiser scoreboard, Old Dominion winner, 80-72. Uh, we'll look at those scores in a little while. Right now, it's Marcus Ziegler for Kansas State. To Wiley Howard, that's how things started for Kansas State, getting that good inside penetration. Mikalik on the move. No basket. Foul came on the floor. All right, let's check now those scores on that Budweiser scoreboard while we have a chance. As you see, it was Virginia Commonwealth over Southern Mississippi by five. And Maryland coming around to beat Clemson at home, 84-71. Old Dominion, as I mentioned, a winner, 80-72 over East Carolina. And in the Southwest Conference, SMU a winner over Baylor. Kansas State off the inbounds pass, back to the 2-3 zone. 
Hoiberg trying to drive in. Pinned off. And swing it around to Thigpen. That's a three from Justice. And he's a guy you just can't leave, even in a 2-3 zone. But the penetration draws the defense inside. And then a nice job of kicking it back out. Good pass by Bayless. Thigpen on the year, Dave, hitting 47% of his three-pointers. Can you see Kansas State working so hard to get it inside. Bayless almost had the steal. And so did Thigpen. Jones just trying to get loose of the ball finally gets it to Ziegler. It's almost like, oh, phew. <laughs> I tell you, when you shoot 44%, everything offensively is a struggle from time to time. Passing, shooting, ball handling. Lacing your shoes. It's just tough to do. <laughs> yeah. Walked. And Ziegler walked with it. See, you get, you get in a hurry to penetrate. You want to get there so quickly that you just shuffle your feet. Let me throw a couple of trends at you as David Altman shots the instructions to his defense. Iowa State 11-0 with a halftime lead. Kansas State 0-5 without a halftime lead this year. Let's see if those trends continue. Certainly if you're a Wildcat fan, you hope not. I bet neither coach reminded his team of that, of that particular stat. Hoiberg got free. Must have been a pick inside. And Hoiberg has the easy layup. And a seven-point lead for Iowa State. That's their biggest of the game. And the problem for Kansas State, if they fall too far behind, they just don't have enough firepower to catch up. This team needs to stay in low-scoring games, defensive games. Jones had that one partially blocked by Bayless. And Howard tried to save it. Bayless came streaking across and partially blocked the shot. Howard couldn't save the rebound. Here with your it's a pretty good offensive team. They've got a lot of people who can hurt you. Like that guy, Nikolic. Looks like uh, Nickerson got banged up a little bit, and they're going to take an official's time out here to check him out. Nickerson hobbling around. They're going to have to replace him. And streaking off the bench for Kansas State is Vincent Jackson. Galen Nickerson, you see him sit down, the Juco player of the year last year. But an explosive player for Kansas State. Streak player. Hot and cold, but they need him back in the game. He's capable of scoring at over 25 in a couple of games for Wichita State. So far has not exploded for Kansas State. Roan gets it in the corner for Ziegler for three. Boy, that's a big one for Kansas State. And a good job by Roan in midair. He realizes the double team is on him, gives it up to a wide open Ziegler. Ziegler doesn't shoot it much, but when he does, he usually makes it, especially from three-point range. Mikalik will try a three, and he's got it. Oh, wow. Wally Howard backs off because Mikalik's an excellent passer. You can't do that. You've got to go up and get him, even when he's 18, 19 feet from the bucket. Nine-point lead for Iowa State. Kansas State, once upon a time, had a nine-point lead on the Cyclones. And Johnny Orr told his team at halftime, let's go out and get with it defensively. They are much more active in the second half. Jackson, in and out, no good. And I think what's really frustrating for Kansas State, how many shots have we seen that have gone in and out, in and out? I, I mean, that's got to be really tough on a coach. Yeah, it's frustrating for the coach and the players. Roan with the push inside. His first. And uh, Rediger comes off the bench for K-State, and Howard will sit down. I'll tell you, it's the one statistic that you just can't overcome. If you can't shoot the ball, even if you up the tempo and you try to get easy buckets and you play good defense and you rebound like crazy, it's tough to beat. Back door to Thigpen. He is fouled, so Thigpen will go to the line. Rowan picks up his second. Thigpen on a nice backdoor cut goes up strong with the left hand. You see the good... ...the ball, even if you up the tempo and you try to get easy buckets and you play good defense and you rebound like crazy, it's tough to beat. Back door to Thigpen. He is fouled, so Thigpen will go to the line. Rowan picks up his second. 
Thigpen on a nice backdoor cut goes up strong with the left hand. You see the good pass again, and Thigpen strong. That's a good call. Rome late getting there, and the contact forces Thigpen to be a little bit short with the basketball. Thigpen, who's got 13, will go to the line for the first time today. <laughs> Here's a guy I think next year has a chance to play in the NBA somewhere. I think he has a chance to make the roster. Well, if he does Thigpen. next year, uh, Johnny Orr's going to miss him. <laughs> He's a junior this year. Yeah. Junior, so. But Digpen, an outstanding player. Yep. He's really elevated his game since coming here a couple of years ago from Flint, Michigan. He's an excellent player. Has all, all the skills you need to be an NBA player. Well, Rediger thought that one was for him and was sure glad to see Roan behind him. Roan for three. That one's short. Gets his own rebound, though. That's a tough shot. Ooh. What a skying rebound for Jackson. Ooh. Oh, they've got some athletes on this Kansas State team. That's what you call going up, snatching it, and coming down with it. Jackson from across the key. Howard Eaton. Eaton had eight in that first half, now in double figures. You see Iowa State with pressure here in the second half, that's designed to up the tempo to force Kansas State to shoot the ball a little quicker than they want to. And it's worked. Jackson again. This time it won't go. Knocked out of bounds off Rediger and it'll go to Iowa State. 15.07 to go. Iowa State has outscored their opponents in the second half by almost 20 per half. And they're exploding on the Wildcats right now, leading by 11. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong in Ames, Iowa. The Cyclones have expanded a four-point halftime lead into 11, 52-41. How have they done it? Well, with defense. I think the, the pressure defense, the full-court pressure, even though they don't try to trap the ball, they wait until it crosses mid-court, but they force Kansas State into some shots that they just can't make, and also Iowa State offensively much more aggressive, too. How does Kansas State try to stem the tide here and get back in it? Not like that. <laughs> I was going to say they have to do it with defense, but good pick that time. The high pick by Mikulik, and Bayless just rubs his man off. Good timing on the question. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Bayless, that's his first two of the game. Boy, he's been instrumental in this game, though. Not scoring, but an excellent job passing the basketball. And very good defense, too. He's on a ski of Jones now. Ziegler getting a little bit more violent in his instructions to his teammates. You can see the frustration on the faces of Kansas State. What a shot, though, by Jones. Bayless right in his face. It doesn't take Ski Jones a long time to catch the ball and let it go. He's got a very quick release. Can Kansas State stay in the zone very long, Dave, with Iowa State leading by this many? I think it depends on how Iowa State shoots the basketball. They've got, again, four people in the game now that can hurt you from the outside. Everybody except Howard Eaton. Eaton tried to get the ball from Hoiberg, but it was knocked out by Ski Jones. And it'll stay with Iowa State with 21 on the shot clock. Out to Hoiberg. He bursts in, is fouled, and almost had the basket. Rediger picks up his second. See, Rediger has to know that Hoiberg is a guy that once he puts him in the court, he's coming to the hole. If Rediger holds his position there and plants his feet, he's got a chance to pick up the charge. Hoiberg, baseline drive. Now, Rediger will come from the right side of your screen, stop right there, and just stay down and let Hoiberg, who did a good job jumping inside, he might have avoided the charge anyway, but once Rediger gets in the air, that's going to be a foul on him. Hey, if you're Johnny Orr, you got to be thrilled. you got a guy like Hoiberg, a freshman, and Mikalik, a freshman, two guys that don't play like freshmen. And Lauren Meyer, another freshman on the bench who doesn't get a lot of playing time. Johnny Orr and Iowa State, they're going to be terrific in the next couple of years. Makes him young again at 64, doesn't it? Good Jones, hustle. good hustle to get the, his own rebound. All the way across to Rediger, who's wide open. That shot's short, though. Bayless. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Ziegler picks up his first. See the look on their face for Kansas State right now. That's the look of a team that's 0-2 in the conference. It's a look of frustration. Uh, you just can't 
overcome offensive deficiencies. You see Ziegler with the reach in there. Iowa State getting up and down the court a little bit quicker than Kansas State. The fifth team foul on Kansas State this half. Iowa State yet to foul this half. And Darryl Cunningham Kansas State Daryl Cunningham will check in along with Galen Nickerson who went out. Obviously, he's okay. Bayless will shoot free throws, an excellent free throw shooter. He hit 24 in a row at one stretch this year for Iowa State. And then hit the skids. Missed five in a row. How do you do that? How do you hit 24 straight and then miss five Lose in a row? that little bit of confidence you have. Bayless led the country, the junior college country, in free throw shooting his freshman year. Hit 92%. Wow. Kilgore, JC, and Texas. See how active Iowa State is defensively. There you go. So they're after every pass. And a foul. That one's going on Hoiberg. Hoiberg's the one grimacing. Not from the call, but from some kind of pain. Fred picks up his second. We'll call it abdominal pain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how else to put it. That's good enough. <laughs> We're here in the afternoon. 13-11. Bayless all over Jones. Tough, tough shot. And he is fouled. Bayless will pick up his first. Now the Big Eight would like to congratulate the men's cross-country team at Iowa State with the help of league and NCAA titleist Jonah Coetz. The Cyclones won the league and finished second in the national meet. Tom Bayless said, I didn't foul him. <laughs> Ian Jones with a broken ankle trying to come off of that from last year 1990 US Olympic Festival that's where he broke his ankle and actually had two surgeries three pins inserted in the first surgery came back re-injured it another operation three more screws do you think he's at hundred percent yet it's tough to say I think sometimes it takes you a year a year and a half mentally to overcome mm. you just have to forget the mind is a wonderful mechanism it allows you to forget some of your injuries, but it takes a while. Walked. Mikali. That shot a little bit long, and Wiley Howard had it go off his hand and out of bounds. One of the loose balls, and seems like uh, everything is going Iowa State's way right now, leading by 13. Mikali. Oh, Mikali came off the pick. It was wide open. Bayless didn't see it. Nice rebound by Nickerson. And you can see the talent there for Kansas State. They've got some athletes like this guy, Cunningham. They're going to count the bucket, I think. Cunningham with the charge. It does count. And the foul on Cunningham, his first. That's the kind of basket we've been talking about all afternoon that Dana Altman wants to see, the transition bucket. Good rebound, force the pace, and then get a good athlete taken from the wing, the basketball to the hole. Twelve twenty remaining. Big pin checks up. Oh. That's see, tough. See him bounce back. He separates himself from the defender with that little step back. It's almost like Larry Bird does. Catches it and steps away from the defender and gets the jump shot. It's almost like a fadeaway, but really not. That's right. He doesn't fade in the air, but he takes the step away from the defender with his left foot, and that enables him to separate and get that shot off. So he'll go in on a guy and then... Nice little step. Hmm. Very, very tough to defend. You gotta have really long arms. <laughs> yeah, really long. Yeah, like Gumby, maybe. <laughs> Jones might have pushed off. Shot clock is at 25. Nickerson banks it home. Nickerson only with four today. Kansas State trying to hang in there, still trailing by 11. Got to call that shot. <laughs> yeah, a game of horse. Yeah, I don't think Nickerson wanted to bank that one out. Picked off by Cunningham, and he's fouled by Thigpen. He picks up his first and the fourth team foul on Iowa State. 
And we've got a timeout with 11.16 to go. Iowa State leading by 11. And we're coming back to Hilton Coliseum in a moment after this message from Phillips 66, the performance company. Let's talk, Dave, about that move you're talking about with Justice Thigpen. Yeah, Thigpen number 24 will catch the pass from Meaton. Now watch after he catches it. Watch his left leg as he steps back before he goes up for the jump shot. You take a look. See him step back with the left foot. This separates him from any defensive problem. Nickerson way off and Justice Thigpen with the bucket. Steve Jones gets it to Nickerson. He's sealed off by Eaton. And again, the defense really has picked it up a notch. Skip McCoy has checked back in for Iowa State. You see the percentages. Boy, look at the second half for Iowa State. Man, they've really turned it on. Under 11 minutes to go. Shot clock is at 10. Ziegler for a three. That's well short. Tipped around. Howard's got it. And a fresh shot clock for Kansas State. Nickerson pulled up and good defense by Hoiberg. Ziegler for a three. It goes out of bounds off of Cunningham. And Iowa State will have it. But good play by Kansas State. They had several cracks at the basket. Well, they're making Iowa State work on defense. But again, when you've got a wide open shot like that, you have to stick it in the hole when you're playing on the road and you're 11 down. McCoy and Hoiberg key in this series against this defense. McCoy. That's a two. His foot was on the line, but McCoy remains red hot. And an excellent pass again by Mikuli. You throw it in, you collapse on a guy 6'11 in the paint, he kicks it right back out for a wide open jump shot. And a foul on McCoy. That's his second. That'll be the fourth team foul on Iowa State. Skip McCoy has been one of the keys offensively for Iowa State, but they've done it in the second half with good defense. That's not the foul. That is the foul. As Skip McCoy knocks the ball up in the air and then goes over the top of Ziegler trying to deflect it. McCoy with uh, 11 points off that bench for Johnny Orr. And he is 4 of 4 from the field, including 3 of 3 from 3-point three land. And Hanson, the freshman, checks back in. And he and Ziegler playing together now. Altman's still looking for that combination, isn't it? Looking for somebody to stick it in the hole. Good hand. Stolen away by Hoiberg. Back to him. Oh, nice. Hoiberg, and he's fouled. Wow. Oh, nice. Buddy Hoiberg gets away with the walk here. But what a great job of two-on-one fast break basketball. Give it to Bayless. Now get it back to him. One, two, three, and up. Give him the extra step. That's a great pass by Bayless. One, two, three, and the dunk. One extra step, but <laughs> the crowd here didn't mind. Kansas State did. Oh, Hoiberg will go to the line. Just the best group of athletes that Johnny Horace had in many years. He said yesterday that he really likes not only the way this team plays, but the overall athletic ability. They can press you and they can run up and down the court. Defensively, it's a much better team than last year's Iowa State club. Yeah, you can do that when you've got good athletic ability. You can pressure the basketball. Hanson can't get loose. We'll take it back and restart the offense again. See, everything is a struggle for Kansas State. Every possession is a struggle for them to get the basketball into the hands of somebody that has a good look at the basket. Jackson goes baseline and stepped out of bounds. Wow. You're right, it is a struggle. That's just trying, it's, it's like driving a car in, in a blinding snowstorm. Hmm. You, know, you drive and you slip and you slide and you, you hit the gas and you hit the brake and it just wears you out trying to get something going offensively. And sometimes you go out of bounds. Yes, <laughs> or off the road, yes. Right. 
Mikalik called for the walk. A little stutter step inside for Julius Mikalik. 65-49. We have 8.28 to go in this one. Iowa State trying to go to 2-1 in the conference. 2-0 at home. Kansas State trying to get a win on the road. They're 0-2 so far in the Big 8. Henson from the corner for three. Jackson, his shot is short. And a foul. That's going on Cunningham, I believe. Kansas State's getting one and two and three sometimes cracks at the basket, but they're just not hitting them. Well, because they rebound so well, they're going to get those extra opportunities. But the key, as you said, they just have not been able to convert. The eighth team foul on Kansas State this half. A one and one situation for Howard Eaton. Been a nice role player for Johnny Orr. Started all 17 games, leading rebounder on the team. Always draws the toughest defensive assignment. Good rebounding inside by Howard, who got it to Henson. Now if Kansas State's going to make their move, they better do it soon. We're under eight minutes to go in this one. Defenses everywhere. Good move by Cunningham, but then there was Mikaly. He tied him up, and the alternate possession will go to Iowa State. Well, you see Howard Eaton in the air, but when Cunningham brings it to Mikaly, the big fella is there with the left hand. Iowa State leading by 14. 65-49, and we're back after this from your local Phillips 66 dealer. Break away to your nearest Phillips 66 station and enter the Super Clean Sweepstakes for a chance to win a trip for two to Acapulco or the 92 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. You can also win a trip to the Phillips 66 Big 8 Tournament or tickets to Big 8 home games in your area. Enter now at participating Phillips 66 stations. Iowa State leading by 14 here in Ames with uh, seven minutes and some change to go in the ball game. Kansas State trying to come out defensively now, pick up the pace, the pressure of the game. Kansas State getting out of that zone. They've been playing much of the game. Shot clock is down to 10. Eaton pulls in. McCoy, the littlest guy on the floor, comes down with it. And a fresh 45. That's a real heartbreaker for Kansas State. Bayless is fouled by Ziegler, and Ron Bayless will go back to the line. Ron Bayless, who has taken over the point guard duties from Justice Thigpen, allowing Thigpen to go to his more comfortable number two guard position. Bayless has started all 17 for Johnny Orr. And I think with his emergence this year, it makes Iowa State and their backcourt one of the best in the conference. Hmm. That's saying a lot. Very good offensively. Thigpen can hurt you in a lot of ways. And this guy runs the court and the team with great, great ability six and a half to go 16 uh, wait 18 point lead losing track 18 point lead for Iowa State Iowa State led by only four at the half it's all right you, I'm losing years of eligibility you're losing points <laughs> yeah <laughs> both losing our minds <laughs> Bayless picks up his second uh, here's a uh, couple of big eight uh, mugs that you can purchase at your participating Phillips 66 dealer. When you buy one of these beautiful mugs, you get a coupon for a free two-liter bottle of Dr. Pepper on your next eight-gallon purchase or fill up at Phillips 66. I've got one for every team. As do I. They're nice. Bayless with the strip away. 
smart move. He realizes he's one on two. He brings it back out. Now they'll run some top five time off the clock. An 18 point lead. They want to use that clock. Hoiberg left handed. Bayless on the follow. And McCoy. And Iowa State still hustling all the way, even they, though they have a 20 point lead. And Kansas State calls timeout. Dane Altman has seen enough. His Wildcats are now trailing by 20 at Hilton Coliseum in Ames. Our score here, Iowa State by 20 over Kansas State. Coming up next here on Raycom, the Nebraska Cornhuskers will take on the Kansas Jayhawks. That one coming up in Lawrence with Jay Randolph and Gary Thompson. They are standing by to bring you all the action right here on Raycom. Kansas State trailing by 20. They need points in a hurry. Rediger with a long rebound. Kansas State here in the second half. Six of 21 from the floor. Oh, man. That is cold. Six of 23. They just had two more misses. And then a foul on Eaton. That's his third. Raycom's pleased to welcome those viewers joining us on the Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. The Big Eight uh, tonight, Dave, with Oklahoma State at Oral Roberts, has a chance to win their 92nd non-conference game. Right now, the Big Eight stands at 91 and 13. If they win that one, and they're heavily favored against the Titans, uh, the Cowboys are, then the Big Eight would equal the most victories they've ever had in non-conference competition. More importantly, I, I think the Big A Conference this year realistically has a shot of getting six teams into the NCAA tournament. I agree. And that, I think, may be the tops of the country. The ACC possibly, but the Big A Conference, if not the best conference overall, is certainly one of the top two. Problem in the Big A is you beat each other up so much. <laughs> There's so many good teams. What a move by Hoiberg! A great athletic ability and also body control as he takes his baseline and then kind of skids inside and finger rolls. Hoiberg, they call him the mayor here from Ames, Iowa. He's been dubbed the mayor. His dad's a professor at Iowa State. Keeps that up in a couple of years, he'll be the governor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tipped out back to Jones. He misses that one. And here comes McCoy. And now they'll slow it up, trying to eat some more clock. 21-point lead for Iowa State. Meekly! Ooh. It's blocked. Howard will pick up the foul. Meekly, despite that injury on his forehead, not gun-shy about taking it to the hole. Well, he lulls you to sleep. He's got three-point range ability. Takes it in. Howard gets all basketball up top, but also catches Meekly across the left forearm. And he'll have a couple of free throws. Iowa State uh, with already four players in double figures. Oh, five, excuse me. Skip McCoy's got 11. Shoots that thing nice and easy. Got a good release of the basketball. Asked him how his eye was doing today. He said, I'm fine. <laughs> Didn't seem overly concerned about it. And he hasn't been overly concerned about a lot since coming to this country. They say he's made the adjustment not only to the basketball team, but to the culture here in Ames a lot quicker than they expected. 23-point lead for Iowa State. Looks like the clones are going to 15-3 and 2-1 and and in the Big 8. Blocked away, and Bayless couldn't handle the rebound. Under four to go. And forget on many of these Raycom stations, it's KU and Nebraska and Lawrence. Tipped away. Meekly trying to find the handle. And a foul. That one's going on Askia Jones. Kansas State's over the big limit, the limit of 10, which means that Mikalik will go to the line shooting too. It's rare to find a guy again at 6'11 that can handle the basketball like Julius Mikalik. 
We talked about Krasimir Chosik back in the early 70s. Krasimir Chosik. Yugoslavia. Who did he play for? Played for BYU. I played against him over there in a Big 8 All-Star team in Yugoslavia. And we talk about a national hero. Really? Yes. Mikulik. Highly thought of everywhere. He's an Ames hero. <laughs> yeah. Iowa hero. <laughs> no question. Three and a half to go. Kansas State with only 16 points in the second half. And Mikulik with his third. 16? 16. Now well, they scored 11 in the first half against Oklahoma State in their Big 8 opener. This is a nice pass by Marcus Ziegler. Rediger fills Mikulik on his left side. And Mikulik went right to Howard Eaton and said, hey, if I'm on the top side of that pass, you've got to help me on the baseline. Iowa State, a very good team defensively. They help all the time. And now for Rediger. Not much going right for Kansas State, especially in this second half when Iowa State really turned on the afterburners. Henson checks back in for Ziegler. And Collier's going to come back into the game for Kansas State. He checks in for Rediger. 3.29 to go in this one. Mikulik pulls up. <laughs> Man, is that soft? That is soft. Oh. No hesitation. Gets to 13 feet and lets her fly. Great confidence in that shooting. Henson almost walked with it. And so did Collier. Blocked by Mikulik from behind. McCoy trying a quick step. Henson... Held on, and McCoy will go to the line. Two guys that are very quick. McCoy will try to go baseline. Watch Hanson cut him off. That's a good move there. But then McCoy able to slide back inside, avoid the head-on contact. And Hanson tries to grab him almost with that right shoulder. Nikolik will come out, and Lauren Meyer comes in. They love him a name. Mikulik perhaps done for the day with 15 points. Hamilton Strickland, a seldom used freshman, has come off the bench for Kansas State. Um, for McCoy, that's the first thing he's missed today. Seventy-seven fifty-one. Henson almost lost it out of bounds. Got to hurry. They don't have much time to get it across. Myers strips it away. McCoy. Man. Hoiberg. 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 Timeout. Kansas State. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong, and watch the freshman Fred Hoiberg. Right, he knocked the ball away, then went and got it. Henson chases, and Hoiberg says, uh-uh. You'll see enough of me in the next three years. We'll both be here. This one I'm taking by myself, and Iowa State with a 30-point advantage. That's unbelievable. 30-point lead for Iowa State. Kansas State, remember, trailed by just four at the half. In fact, the Wildcats led by nine in this game. What a turnaround. Iowa State went on a 19-4 run in a seven-minute period in the first half, and that was about it. You see the Cyclones and the Wildcats shooting percentage here in the second half. It's been all Iowa State. Man, 78 for Iowa State, 24 for Kansas State. Brian Pearson has checked in for the Cyclones. Henson gets loose for a three. 
Jackson on the follow. It's up and good. Brad Pippett. As Johnny Orr has gone to his bench, that's Donnell Bivens. Pippett on the push on Henson. Johnny Orr has cleared his bench here with a 30-point lead. Now it's down to 28 now. Orr just wants to get this one over with right now. Under two minutes to go. Dane Altman probably wants to get it over with too. Coaches go through stretches like this. I know it's not easy in Manhattan, but Dane Altman's a good coach. Yeah, he it's is. It's going to take some time. He's got to find somebody offensively to step up and get the job done. Unbelievably, he's already feeling pressure in Manhattan. Well, it's you got to for that. Yeah, absolutely. You got to give him time. And a year and a few games is certainly not enough time. With his own player. Well, there's one of those big jams by Meyer. About a minute and a half to go. Next up for Kansas State. They will play at home against Missouri, Kansas City, and then at home a week from today against Colorado. Fresh shot clock. Henson for three. And for Henson, his first points of the game. Sean Jackson, down low, Bivens, he tried to jam it home, it was partially blocked by Strickland. Jackson tried to jam that one home, but was stuffed by Jackson. Obviously they're not related. At least not on this play. <laughs> Jackson baseline, he's gonna throw this one down I think with the right hand, and you can see the block and the foul. Mike Bergman, a former Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa, checks in for ISU, and Pippett will get a rest. Just think, Johnny Orr's got Pippett and Pearson, his only seniors. Other than that, man, everybody's back. And he brings both off the bench. Isn't that something? Jackson hits them both. He's now got eight. 47 to go. On the weave, Bergman. What a play. Nice little pass. Yeah. Backdoor cut right on the money. 85-58. Nice pass. Henson to Strickland, and he's fouled by Bergman. Boy, did that look like his older brother. Yeah, it did. Brian Henson on the penetration. The pass didn't catch it, just took it right off the dribble with the right hand. Nice pass inside. Strickland goes up strong. They expect big things out of Hamilton Strickland as well. Just 11 seconds to go. Many of you will be seeing the Nebraska-Kansas game coming up next on most of these Raycom stations. And somebody was in the lane a little bit early. I think that was Roan. So if Kansas State will let them, and I think they might, Iowa State will have a chance just to run out the clock. Well, they didn't let him. Ziegler with a steal. Roan, he wanted to jam that one down. And Bivens said, uh-uh.
Yeah, Roan was going to throw this one down big with the right hand. Bivens in the air, too, and Roan's fortunate that he didn't get hurt here because he landed on that left arm. But he's up and apparently okay. You don't want to get somebody hurt in the last four seconds of this no. thing. A little frustration, perhaps, when he took off there. He wanted to take out some frustration on that basket. And Roan, who had double figures, as Dave's mentioned, in uh, his last three games, will not have double figures today. That'll do it. Well, Iowa State led by four at the half, and Johnny Orr and the Cyclones exploded in the second half. Iowa State winning at home for the 10th time this year, 85-59 over Kansas State. Big 8 Conference Basketball brought to you by Phillips 66, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline. When we say come back, we mean it. And in part by Budweiser, friends know when to say when by Buick, by Dr. Pepper, and by AT&T. Welcome back to Hilton Coliseum. They're filing out now for an impressive win by Iowa State over Kansas State, 85-59. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong. Impressive, I guess, is the word, especially in that second half. I, I think that will do. Iowa State <laughs> defensively came out and, and really upped the pressure on Kansas State. You can see right from the outset of the second half that they wanted to force Kansas State into the up-tempo and make it hard for them to get good looks at the basket. They were able to do that. They were able, because of that, to generate some easy baskets for themselves and Iowa State, really pretty good basketball team that played very well in the second half. Well, Kansas State, it looks like a long road for them. Can they get it back together by the end of this season? Well, I like Dana Altman. I like the job that he's done, and they're struggling right now. There's no other way to put mm -hmm. it. They're looking for a couple of guys to step up big offensively, somebody to take the pressure off. If they could find that guy or those guys, it would really help this club immensely, but uh, I think it's going to be a team that will be up and down. They'll have to win some games with their defense, with their trapping game, and some easy buckets because they don't appear to have somebody that's going to set the world on fire offensively. Now, Kansas State feels like last year they had shooting problems, but they didn't have good athletes. They feel like they have good athletes this year. They just can't shoot it. Well, I think they're plenty athletic enough. The problem is, again, just finding somebody to step up at crunch time, a, a go-to guy, if you will, that Kansas State can rely on when things get tough. Now, this team is very athletic. They rebound well. They're quick. They play good defense. They just look for that one special guy. All right, we'll be back to talk about Iowa State in just a moment. The Cyclones very very impressive here today at Hilton Coliseum, winning big over the Wildcats of Kansas State. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. The Cyclones pouring it on in the second half, beating Kansas State by a bundle. Boy, Iowa State, an impressive team. We saw them a week ago against Oklahoma State. They get onto Stillwater. I don't think too many teams are going to win in Stillwater this year. And they were sort of manhandled by the Cowboys, but today a different story. Well, I don't think too many teams are going to win on the road, period, in this conference. I don't think any clubs are going to come in here, at least not many, and win at Ames. You won't win many times at Stillwater. You won't win many times, if at all, Lawrence, and it goes on and on. This conference conference is as strong as it's ever been, uh, as balanced as it's ever been, really from top to bottom, good players and good teams all the way. Well, that was emphasized by Colorado's game with Kansas, where Colorado almost won at home. Let's look at some stats from the ball game today, and as you see, Kansas State just again, just having a terrible time shooting the basketball, 36% from the field. Well, Iowa State shot 57%, uh, neither team particularly shooting well from the free throw line, but uh, rebounds, I think one of the keys for Iowa State, they were able to stay in the basketball game and stay in the rebounding game. That's where Kansas State